What we're going to do next is we're going to invent a very close cousin to the binary search tree called a B tree that will avoid all the problems of potentially becoming spindly. So let's say we have a nice, beautiful, bushy tree like this, and we have new items coming in, 17, 18, 19. And if we just add them as if this is a normal binary search tree, we'd have 16, 17, 18, 19, and the tree starts getting spindly. So I'm gonna give you a crazy suggestion, which is if we want to avoid adding new leaves to the bottom, right, where we end up getting these little spindly leaves sticking off the bottom of the tree, well, let's just make a rule and say you can never add new leaves. So if I do this, the tree will never get imbalanced. To see what I mean by that, let's imagine we have 17, 18, and 19. Well, what we could do is just stuff more items inside each node. That is, whenever I insert 17, instead of dangling it off the tree, I'm just gonna add it to the same node that 16 was already part of. Then 18 comes along, and we'll just stick it in there. And basically we'll overstuff the leaf nodes. And here you can see just clearly that we have perfect balance the height is always going to stay two for this tree. Now let's reflect a little bit on whether or not this data structure actually even makes sense. Uh, so this is after I've added 19. And so I'll say this, it is a logically consistent, but very strange data structure, but the operations work. So imagine that we're thinking of this as a set and we say, does the tree contain 18? So we look at 13 and we say, ah, we're looking for 18, so we go right. Next, we look at 15, we're bigger, so we're gonna go right. We then say, hey, 16, are you the same thing as 18? No. How about 17? Are you 18? No. 18? Yes, I found it. So it works. But the problem with this idea, well, the problem is that eventually you end up with maybe a leaf node that just has a big old list in it. And again, you basically just degenerated to a linked list. Okay, so what do we want to do to make things even better? Well, we're going to revise this idea of an overstuffed tree. Uh, so if our leaf nodes become too juicy, right? Just so juicy that it's bursting. Well, then, well, <laughs> then what we're gonna do is say, there's a limit. We're not gonna let this thing get so full that it just explodes. We're gonna set a limit, like say L equals three. So if any node has more than L items, then we're gonna pass an item up to the parent. Which one, which one are we gonna pass? So let's say this node is too full. Why is it too full? Because we said L equals three. So we're gonna pass either 16, 17, 18, or 19 up. And the one I'm gonna pass is 17. Now, why did I pick that one? Well, because I know personally, this is one of those things where we're inventing something from scratch, but I happen to know that this is a better choice than either the first or the last. So I'm gonna pass this item up to the, the parent. And when I do that, I end up with this new tree. Now this tree's a little weird. This one's weirder even than what we started with. So now I think there's a problem. I don't like this tree. There's something ugly about it. And the problem is that, well, 16, it's to the right of 17. If you look at this tree, that there's this bottom node which contains 16, 18, and 19, which is to the right of 17. Now this is no longer a binary search tree because I have multiple nodes, uh, multiple items in each node, but it still just feels aesthetically bad to me. There should not be a 16 lurking down here. So let's try and fix it. My challenge for you is how can we change this so that it works? So I still, I want you to keep the feature that we have a maximum L equals three. And I want you to keep the feature that we're going to pass the middle left item up. But now I want you to do one more different thing. I want you to make like tweak this idea so it's even better. Pause the video, see if you can come up with something that feels right, and then I'll spoil the answer that I have in mind. So key constraint, I still want this node to say 15, 17. All right, so the traditional idea and what brings us the B tree is that when a node goes up, we are going to actually split the existing node. So the idea is that it's like your thing is so juicy that you rip part of it out and that causes the node to split into two pieces, okay? So here, when the 17 moves up, the 16 and the 18 and the 19 are split apart. Now, what do I do with those two nodes? Well, I'm gonna hang the right node off the right side of the parent, the middle node off the middle part of the parent, and the left node off the left side of the parent. And actually, if you look at this, there's a really neat feature, which is that here's 15 and 17. 
These are the items that are less than 15 and 17. The middle item is everything that's between 15 and 17. And the right is everything greater than both 15 and 17. And so we end up with the node that has three children, but that's fine. And that's basically what the B tree is all about. Okay. Now, this is also a logically consistent data structure, but unlike the overstuffed tree, it is not so weird. So if we want to look for something, let's say, where's 18? We say, hey, 18, are you 13? Nope. Okay. Well, are you bigger? Yes, go right. Okay, we look again here, and we compare versus the 15, we're bigger than that. We compare versus the 17, we're bigger than that. At this point, there's nothing left in this node, so we're going to go to the right child, and then we'll search this node. So the downside of this approach is that looking at each node costs us L compares because there's up to L values in each node, but that's okay because L is a constant we set ahead of time. So whereas before we had this issue where a node can get really, really big and we have to search every single item in the node, here now L is constant. So what if something happens where like a non-leaf node gets too full? Can we split that? We're gonna do that, but first, I want to make sure that this all makes sense to you. So let's suppose we're right where we were, and we add the numbers 20 and 21. So at this point, this node is violating our limit, so I'd like you to draw the post-split tree, what it will look like. Okay. So after the split, hopefully you've paused the video, 19 is going to move up to the parent, and the most natural choice, I think, is that when 18 splits apart from 20 and 21, that this node will now have four children, everything to the left of 15, everything between 15 and 17, everything between 17 and 19, and everything greater than 19. And so that's the core idea behind a B tree. And in the next video, we will start pushing ourselves a little further and seeing what happens if we have to split nodes that are higher in the tree.